Here we go. Right here. We'll keep the flames going today. We won't go into my blue background. For people's sakes, I think I'll just zoom in a bit. I don't know if people can even read that. I hope people can read that. Okay, so this is the um, one of my more recent uploads. Uh, this event could improve Genshin Impact significantly. Um, one of my longer videos, I'm actually quite happy with how it turned out after like re-uploaded and all that stuff. But I guess to give like a, a little bit of a, like a breakdown of this video, I just took one of the more recent events, like that one where you fight that giant hilly churl and how that could be implemented into like a raid boss fight and be permanent content uh, content in Genshin Impact because Genshin Impact has no end game content or is very lacking in that outside of Abyss. Um, so that obviously gets people talking in the comment section, like, like uh, including my own replies. We got 42 comments, which is per quite good for me on my long form videos. But there's this one that started off with Rake over here, who is a pretty all right person. I've been having a pretty um, mature back and forth, despite some disagreements and agreements here and there. But throughout that, there have been like a third party to jump in. So let's just... Uh, Let's just jump right in there. Um, so yeah, so they, they go on about the 3.7 Abyss, which was uh, arguably what, uh, the hardest Abyss and all that stuff. Uh, but they actually think that 3.7 Abyss is, but we're, we're gonna ignore all of that. If you actually care about reading all that stuff and my replies and all that, you please go check that video out. But no, we're gonna go over here to Direct Hunter uh, because I woke up and I read this comment and, or sorry, no, I before going to bed, I read this comment. He also had another reply later that I woke up to and I was just like, whoa. Because he starts off pretty strong with that's absolute cap. Are you complaining about that abyss all while doing it with a crayon up my nose so far that would make you look normal? I don't think it was difficult at all. It was extremely restrictive. I had to play the whole thing with a team that could input enough elemental application on three kinds of shields and that worked with the Thundering Manifestation followed by the Baptist. For those of you that don't know what the 3.7 Abyss was, um, it was definitely one I struggled with. It was, uh, there was like a lot of shielding and you had to like really have, um, you were really restricted on your teams and for coverage and all that stuff. So it, it was, a, it was pretty, it was a fairly frustrating one. I didn't find it as bad as this guy had to deal with. It wasn't difficult in any way, it just didn't let you play anything you liked unless you liked Burgeon and Nahida National. No one was looking at those teams. No one really cared about Burgeon because the best Burgeon team in, uh, involved Toma and no one really wanted to use Toma and no one had him built because he kind of, when he was released, he kind of sucked. Nahida National, there was enough people doing Nahida National at least when that came out, but it wasn't that unpopular, I don't think. But yes, 3.7 Abyss was a nightmare and this person is just like letting out some fume. We're just going to read all of it, <clears throat> um, as long as there's words I, um, as long as it's words I can say. You claim of it being the same players saying it was too difficult when not even one patch before people bleeped soiled their diapers crying about the consecrated beast while half of the meta community was extremely pleased because we got an enemy that actually fought back instead of just stalling one thing is a difficult fight and another is an elemental check with an infuriating freeze mechanic that can't be dodged because your sugar daddy Honyo was too busy <laughs> cleaning the saliva of the parts to bleep fix their Beyblades, hit bot hit Beyblade hit boxes, or at least remove the infinite spin bug. <laughs> Wait, the infinite- oh yeah, the infinite spin bug was super annoying. I didn't personally experience it, I don't think, but yeah, I know. Um, so he's talking about, I don't remember what chamber it is, but it was like the, uh, two cryo, um, abyssal herald things and one of the, one of the hydro ones, or was it two hydro and one cryo? But yeah, you would get infinitely fr uh, frozen if you weren't careful with that one. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, your conclusion isn't backed by anything, but at least you came close to the real answer. Players want something that makes the characters feel good to play and there's no such a thing. In the current game, I, I I would agree with this one for the most part. Locking players out of several characters isn't difficult, it's just being a piece of... <laughs> The game can't pretend like raising your favorite characters is enough and immediately punish you for it all. I have all of my characters built to a barely passable level. You think I had a problem? Hell no. The thing is just didn't want you to play certain characters uh, that in 12.1.2 had no deal being so buggy, so RNG dependent, and much less in the same abyssal moon as the consecrated beast who ended up going away without a single fix because your dear Hoyo couldn't be bothered with it. I mean, that's true. Hoyo does have a really big problem about, has a really big issue about not fixing a lot of their problems. So that's one thing that's kind of based. Um, they can choose whoever they want to be on floor 12, to be honest, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it does rotate, so I don't see there being too, any reason to be 
particular as angry as this person uh but i can uh, he, he definitely has every right to be angry about the bugginess especially for like the only i should probably emphasize the only end game content genshin has i don't remember it being too rng dependent i mean your bonuses kind of could make it or break it for you but that, that's the thing this is a comment on my channel yes 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 this is that's what i despise about fake casuals they think we want an in immune enemy with 20 million hp and they recoil at the idea when what we actually want are real fights i mean it would be it would have been useful if you like gave an example or emphasize what you meant by a real fight because a real fight i feel like that's kind of that can be kind of sub subjective but okay having to hit the same enemy with the same uh 40 times isn't difficult hitting a rotation when a bad dodge could kill is that's why early bosses felt good because you had to play with the mechanics instead of brute forcing them all everything was in a zoo after in a zoo is is wait or hit the shiny parts was it really after inazuma where we had a lot of like stalling bosses that's actually true because the hardest abysses were in the sumeru patches i have a feeling that because there was quite a big shift in uh, the amount of people playing the game and people were not playing long enough to get for them to get their for hoyo to get like the sponsorships i think they needed to implement game mechanics or enemies to fight that forced players to play it ever so slightly longer so that their numbers were were are to like be higher so i think that was like a strategy on their part and um yeah we a lot of people made it known that we hated it because i certainly do i don't mind stalling if it includes like us having to dodge stuff a great example of that would be like la senora where she would go into her pyro nato type of thing and we'd have to dodge it we'd be losing hp we had stuff to do versus just waiting for an enemy snake to pop off the ground and just do nothing until that happens this person got a reply by the original uh commentator uh <laughs> my comment stroke a nerve yeah it certainly did oh gosh it's a long one uh, in your last paragraph, oh, he breaks it down too. Not wanting 20 million, to be honest, you aren't upset. Wait, 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 actually, no, this is actually good. This is good, this is good. <laughs> you enjoy them? You actually enjoy them. I don't like the Wii not going underground, I agree. And then the one in the underground chasm, I don't particular, uh, particularly enjoy as well. Uh, in your last paragraph, uh, you say early bosses felt good because of mechanics and anything after Inazuma is uh, brute force or shoot the shiny. Early game bosses before Inazuma were majority overgrown whopper flowers and hypostasis. Uh, and those bosses were elemental lock too. I mean, not necessarily. I feel like the Whopper Flowers and Hypostasis, because they were elemental, it kind of, those were like tutorial bosses to kind of help you with the uh, reaction elements of the game more than anything. Before, but elemental restrictions still apply to these early game bosses, which you somehow enjoy. As for the mechanics, it's still wait or hit the shiny. What do you mean wait? As for the Primo Bishops, that's just brute force. As for wanting 20 million HP immune enemies, be honest, you aren't upset about the 20 million HP, nor are you really upset about doing the same shit 40 times. Especially since you seem like a person that enjoys being ro doing rotations perfectly, which implies you already are doing the same over and over. The truth why you are upset with these enemies other than the element restrictions is just that you can't use your character's damage numbers when hitting the shields that's all don't make it so complicated <laughs> oh you're trying to man really trying to call out the zetter guy about difficulty difficulty comes in many forms that is true while your own limited concept of difficulty for example a bad dodge resulting in death is surely one and i agree is fine that's why i love this consecrated beast honestly consecrated beasts scared me when they were re just added to the abyss and every time I notice them getting added to the abyss, I get my hands get a little extra sweaty. Having to think strategize and how to deal with the elements is also one. True. Uh, restrictions, time element, enemy stalling, HP pull, one shot mechanics, etc. These are all cogs in what difficulty it is. Arguably, yes, uh, but I do have a reply to that. You won't like any some that's true you won't like no the moment you start to struggle feel resistance is, dif is difficulty players are just too prideful to ever admit it so they come up with terms like restrictive hp sponges just stalling bad hit boxes okay that's an issue but you know bugs are unintentional forms of difficulty bugs are unintentional forms of uh, difficulty too i mean no i mean there are definitely bugs that appear in games that end up just turning into mechanics a really good example of a game i played where that is true is um um, the Civilization series because um, 
In Harder Difficulties, Gandhi, uh, I feel like so many people in the comment section doesn't even know what Civ is, uh, but um, Gandhi, there was a bug in Gandhi that it, once you reach a certain point in the game, uh, he goes from being a peaceful leader to building nuclear bombs and then just nuking all the other civilizations in that game. And it was so crazy, but fans actually kind of liked it. So they kept it as a permanent thing in the series with Gandhi. So, I mean, there's definitely bugs that end up being game mechanics permanent to the series, but hitboxes is definitely an issue and bugs sh that make it near impossible um, and ruin the fun do need to be um, changed and fixed. Oh, he continues. Of course you struck a nerve. You're presenting BS as facts. Waiting for the Wii nut to come out isn't difficult. It's annoying. I agree with this. I mean, they're kind of both right. I mean, like what he's saying is that these are all forms of difficulty. It kind of is. But the main point of a game is that it needs to be fun, not annoying. And if your form of difficulty is more annoying than fun and there doesn't seem to be any like reward or relief once achieving it and you're just like frustrated, then it ends up being a bad form of difficulty. That's the issue there. They could have improved from the simple mechanics into better stuff, but instead they made it all a style competition. Yep. The narwhal spends 40% of the time hidden. The dendro boss has the, has the middle phase. You know what's the difference between that and Serena, for example. And one, you're waiting for the sake of waiting in one. Signora, you're actively trying to bring down the shield on the dendro boss or dodging the tornadoes. The salads and cubes. Look at uh, look at Overwatch. Now he brings up other uh, Overwatch as well. Consecrated beasts are a good challenge because the punishment is death. Yep. Uh, defending bugs and trying to pass them as forms of difficulty has to be a top tier ball gargle move. <laughs> Gargler move. <laughs> boy, oh boy. The billion dollar company could take a steamy on a napkin and you would praise it as gourmet food. <laughs> but sure, let's pretend that today's DPS plus character check is better than things like the Ocean Aid event or the Osile Wife event because God forbids that anything requires actual knowledge or skill instead of X character on X set doing X rotation at X time. And he finishes off with Jesus, this game is doomed. This game is not doomed because there's too many casual players, so it's never going to die. Cheesh. Uh, meanwhile, the, the original guy and me just had like a proper conversation to finish it all off. So there you go. That, that, that be it. That be it. That's what I wanted to share with you today. Um, interesting part of my comment section if you want to read it yourself just go to this video over here just on my channel and um maybe even give it a watch a like and if you haven't subscribed to it why not subscribe to it as well